Welcome to Elcor Technologies Incorporated. In this video, we will discuss the installation of the Watson Mark II power and energy meter. Warning! The advice in this video is for guidance only. All installations must be done by properly trained and certified personnel according to local and national building standards and electrical codes. Dangerous high voltages may be present during the installation process and the appropriate precautions are necessary. Never work on live circuits. In this video, we'll review hardware requirements including mounting, terminal connections, power supply, fusing, and current transformers. We will cover input wiring, including voltage inputs and current inputs, communications wiring, such as RS-45 and Ethernet, initial configuration, including CT ratios, and some final checks. The Watson Mark II is an advanced power and energy meter. It can be ordered in various configurations, including CT inputs for 5 amp, 333 millivolt, milliamp, and Rogowski coils. A display with data logging and Ethernet with Wi Fi are also optional. The Watson Mark II meter is designed to be mounted within an enclosure. It is specified for an operating temperature between minus 40 to plus 70 degrees Celsius in a non condensing environment. Optionally, the meter may be ordered in a kit format pre-mounted in a NEMA enclosure with various options and configurations. Contact Elcor for more details. The meter features a quick DIN mounting method. Ensure that the grooves in the back of the enclosure securely mount to the top of the DIN rail. Depending on the exact enclosure, you may need to pull back the lower mounting tab when installing the meter on the DIN rail and then press it in to secure the meter onto the rail. Alternatively, the meter may be mounted directly to a panel or backplate using the two keyholes in the back. If installing into an outdoor enclosure, ensure that there are no conduits entering from the top, especially within the vicinity of the meter. This can cause condensation to drip onto the meter, creating a potentially hazardous situation. The recommended wire gauge is as follows. For voltage terminals, AWG 14 to 22. For current terminals, AWG 12 to 16 for 5 amp CTs or AWG 16 to 22 for milliamp or millivolt CTs. Note, milliamp CTs may have their leads extended at least 200 feet or more depending on the gauge of the wiring used. Check out our support site for more information. Avoid extending leads on 5 amp, millivolt, and Rogowski coil CTs without proper consultation. Ensure that the proper voltage rating is used for all wiring. 600 volt rated wiring is recommended whenever possible. To prepare the wires for installation, strip back approximately 6 mm or 1 quarter inch. If using stranded wire, ensure that there are no stray strands by twisting the wire. For an even better connection, consider using wire ferrules. When installing the wire into the connector, first ensure that the screw is backed out all of the way such that the wire cage is fully open. Otherwise, the wire may be inserted under the cage, which will not properly grip the wire when tightened. Once the wire is inserted into the connector, tighten the screw. Test the connection by gently tugging on the wire to ensure it is properly seated in the connector. Connector torque specifications are in the datasheet. The Watson Mark II requires a 12 to 30 volt DC or 24 volt AC power supply. It requires less than 2.5 VA, which is approximately 100 milliamp supply current, so a very small power supply will be sufficient. A 24 volt DC power supply is recommended. They are available in a number of styles, including several DIN mount varieties as well as several input voltage types. Elcor's VX24 may be used for input voltage flexibility, including 277, 347, 480, and 600 volt AC taps. The power supply is wired to the top left black terminal. Observe the polarity. 
Note that the output communications G terminal is electrically tied to the power supply negative terminal. The power supply may be shared with multiple pieces of equipment such as data loggers, gateways, or other sensors. If using an AC output power supply and sharing it with other equipment, make sure to note the polarity into each piece of equipment to avoid ground loops, which could damage the power supply or any connected equipment. The voltage inputs should be fused to protect the building wiring. Since the voltage inputs do not draw any appreciable current, current draw is less than about half a milliamp, the fuse or breaker should be the lowest value that is practical. Generally, if using an existing breaker, a 10 amp or 15 amp breaker is more than sufficient. If using fuses, ensure the correct fuse rating and specify the lowest value which is practical to obtain. Generally, 1 amp fuses are available. Elcor sells an interfacing block called iBlock, which simplifies installation. This product includes a ganged 3 position, 600 volt rated Class CC fuse block, fuses, a neutral terminal, and a CT shorting interface. The Watson Mark II is directly compatible with any system voltage up to 600 volts line to line. Therefore, Potential transformers are not required unless exceeding those voltages. Ensure that there are no live voltages on the taps prior to working on the meter. Take note of which phase belongs to which of the voltage taps. In the case of a breaker panel, it may not be obvious which phase each breaker is attached to. It is critical for the correct operation of the meter that the voltages be correctly identified, especially as it pertains to matching with the current inputs which we will discuss shortly. The meter is compatible with all popular system wiring types, including three-phase four-wire Y, three-phase three-wire delta, single-phase 12240, also known as split-phase, and single-phase installations. Other less common wiring configurations are also supported. Contact Elcor for additional details in these cases. For a three-phase, four-wire Y installation, wire each of the three phases to the corresponding terminal on the meter, with the neutral also connected. For a three-phase, three-wire delta installation, wire each of the three phases to the corresponding terminal on the meter. In this case, there is no neutral, and there is no connection to the end terminal on the meter. For a split phase installation, connect one of the hot phases into the VA terminal and the other hot phase into the VB terminal. The neutral should be wired into the end terminal. The C phase input on the meter is left unconnected. For a single phase installation, connect the hot phase into the VA terminal and the neutral into the end terminal. In this case, since the meter measures and accumulates all readings on a per phase basis, Additional loads may be monitored using the VB and VC inputs. The Watson Mark II is an indirect meter, meaning that it is designed to be used with current transformers, commonly referred to as CTs. The purpose of a CT is to both scale the measured current signal into the meter, as well as isolate the current measurements from the voltage and each other. CTs come in a variety of shapes, styles, and output signal configurations. Solid core CTs tend to be more accurate, while split core are easier to install on existing wiring. Rogowski coils are a good choice for high current measurements, including installation on bus bars. CT outputs include voltage, such as 333 millivolt, milliamp, 5 amp, and Rogowski coil. It is important to note that each output type requires a specific meter model to work properly. Using the improper meter model with the chosen CT output type may cause damage to the meter. As with voltage inputs, do not perform any installation or maintenance on the meter with live current transformers. This is especially important with 5 amp CTs as they can produce high voltages when not shorted through a meter or shorting mechanism. If a shorting block, like the Elcor I block, is used, ensure that the shorting bars are in the shorted or maintenance position. 
While millivolt, milliamp, and Rogowski coil CTs do not produce dangerous output voltages like 5 amp CTs, it is still not recommended to work with the CTs energized. It is important to understand and observe the CT labeling and nomenclature. Usually, CTs are represented on a wiring diagram as pictured here. The leads are typically color-coded and labeled as X1 and X2. One side of the CT will be designated as the H1 side, sometimes labeled as this side towards source. When wiring the CTs into the meter, observe the X1 and X2 polarity. These wires should connect to the appropriate phase input of the corresponding 1 and 2 terminals on the meter. That is, the X1 wire of the A phase CT should connect to the IA1 terminal, the X2 wire of the phase ACT should connect to the IA2 terminal, and so on for each respective phase. When installing CTs, it is important to observe the polarity, orientation, phasing, and pairing. Polarity refers to the wiring of the X1 and X2 output wires into the corresponding I1 and I2 terminals for the respective phase. Reversing the polarity will not influence the current readings or magnitude of the power, but will reverse its sign and thereby the direction of energy accumulation. Orientation refers to the physical placement of the CT on the conductor. Reversing the orientation is the same as reversing the polarity in that it will not influence the current readings or magnitude of the power, but will reverse its sign. Phasing refers to the correct matching of voltage and current inputs. More specifically, the CT connected to the IA1 and IA2 current input terminals must be installed on the same phase that is tapped into the VA terminal, and so on for all phases. This is imperative for accurate meter measurements. The results of mismatched voltage and current inputs will influence the readings for power and power factor, and thereby energy, and it is a common installation mistake. CT pairing refers to ensuring that each X1 and X2 wire pair be connected to the respective terminal input pair. While this may seem obvious, mistakes can happen, especially when running the conductor pairs through a conduit. If wired incorrectly in this way, in some cases, measurements may still occur depending on the connection path, but obviously they will be incorrect. In a worst case scenario, the incorrectly paired CT may be unshorted and could cause damage to the meter as discussed previously of using 5 amp CTs. This is why it is a good idea to mark or label each CT at the CT itself as well as on the end of the wire pairs to be able to correctly identify which wire belongs to which CT and phase. As with voltages, varying wiring types require varying CT installations. For a three-phase, four-wire Y system, install one CT per phase. While it is possible to use fewer number of CTs only when using a 5 amp meter and CTs, Review the various wiring diagrams on Elcor's website for more information. For a three-wire delta, again, install one CT per phase. For a split-phase system, install one CT on each phase. For a single-phase system, install one CT on the phase. As mentioned earlier, it is possible to monitor multiple single-phase loads due to the meter's ability to measure all parameters on a per-phase basis. In this case, install a CT for additional loads to be monitored. When connecting RS-485 equipment, a quality, twisted pair cable should be used. Consider a shielded cable, especially for longer runs. It is important to note that there are a number of different nomenclatures used by manufacturers to label the RS-485 terminals. Refer to each device's manual to understand the suggested connections. The Watson Mark II uses D plus and D minus designations for the RS-485 port. Generally, D plus connects to B and D minus connects to A on other devices. 
While a ground connection is not strictly necessary, it is recommended in most applications. Observe the same wiring methodology for any other RS-485 equipment on the bus. Ensure to set the Modbus address, sometimes known as the unit ID, on the meter using the dip switch or the display to the desired address. Each device on the RS-485 Modbus chain must have a unique Modbus address. If using the E4 meter model, Ethernet connection is straightforward. Using a quality Cat5e or higher patch cable, connect the meter to the network. While the meter may be directly connected to a PC for configuration purposes, in most cases it is connected to a switch or a hub. Advanced network configuration is out of the scope of this video, but check out our support site for more resources. Note that the E4 model of the meter replaces the RS-485 port with the Ethernet jack. Therefore, it is not possible to use both RS-485 and Ethernet in this configuration. If this type of connection is required, contact Elcor for some options. Upon first power-up, the meter will prompt the user through the display if the CT ratios have not yet been configured. The CT ratios may be set via the onboard display or via Modbus. In this quick example, we set the CT ratio to 200 to 5 using the onboard buttons. Check out our support site for more information on setting CTs. If the meter does not have a display, the configuration will need to be done through Modbus. This will depend on the data logger or system being used. Alternatively, Modbus Commander may be used to set these parameters using either an RS-485 or Ethernet connection. Check out our support site for a video discussing using RS-485 and Modbus Commander. With the meter powered on and CT ratios configured, it is a good time to review the measurements to check for proper installation. This is most easily done by reading the real-time parameters either through the onboard display itself, a remote terminal such as Modbus Commander, third-party data logger, or monitoring platform. Review the readings for voltage, current, power factor, and power to ensure that they match expectations. Check out our measurement troubleshooting video for a more detailed explanation of each of the checks. The link will be in the description. Following these installation and commissioning tips and being aware of the key points made in this video will prevent measurement errors and additional site visits. Understanding how installation decisions influence the readings is critical to a successful metering operation. We hope that this video has been useful to outline some of the requirements and recommendations for a successful installation. For more resources, including white papers and videos, check out our support site at support.elcor.net.